Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. I'm here with Jeff Frick, my colleague and co-host for the week. Jeff, it's been a, an excellent week. This is day three. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angles, and Wikibon's coverage of ServiceNow Knowledge. Uh, it's been a really eye-opening event. Uh, we're here in Vegas, we've been here all week. What did we learn this week? So we learned that IT has a toothache and ServiceNow has uh, a remedy. And so we heard <laughs> from a lot of practitioners about how ServiceNow is helping automate IT, run IT like a business. Uh, we heard some challenges in terms of how people actually quantify you know, the business case and things of that nature, but probably the best one that we heard is, look, just talk to your CFO about going from a CapEx to a variable expense. That's going to probably be the most useful. The other thing that we heard is, generally, very consistently, people are starting with incident management, change management, problem management, and then moving out to other parts of the IT organization. Uh, developing new applications. A and we heard about the importance of starting with a CMDB, a configuration management database, a single source of record. And while that's best practice, it's not always easiest from an organizational standpoint. For you to succeed organizationally in doing that, you're going to have to bring together application heads, business process heads, the various you know, department PMO folks, IT infrastructure people, and the like, and the best chance you're going to have of affecting that change is to really do it from a top down. You're going to have to have top management support. The other thing we heard in terms of advice was start small, start with incident, start with change and problem management and grow out from there. We saw some innovations this week from ServiceNow. We saw some uh, mobile apps. Uh, uh, we saw also some announcements uh, specifically around what's called App Creator, the ability to really simplify the development of applications. We saw ServiceNow as both, a, we're seeing them as both a SaaS player for IT service management and increasingly becoming a platform as a service on which to build new applications. And Jeff, I got to say I was impressed with the quality of the customers, uh, with the quality of the management. Fred Luddy's a rock star, he's a, a super alpha geek visionary. Uh, Frank Slootman, you guys who follow the show know, we always love Frank Slootman, the guy who really knows how to grow companies and manage companies and inspire people. Uh, and as well, you know, the people throughout the organization have done a, certainly a fantastic job with this event. Great job obviously for supporting this cube. We really appreciate uh, that support and uh, the great guests that we had on. And overall, I'd say, uh, Home run for ServiceNow. Yeah, it was it was really a great event, and and you know it's fun to get the executives on, and Fred and Frank were terrific. But it's even more fun, and I think one of the, the special things, opportunities for the cube, is for people to hear from the practitioners. You know, let's hear the real story, and and I think we, we did a great job of in not only getting the story from them, which I thought was the best part. Really, is that I think they summed it up. You know, getting a seat at the, at the business table. You know, really being uh, participants in the business, growing the business, changing the business through transformative IT. I thought that was terrific. And really hearing the individual stories of a really disparate set of businesses, disparate set of business problems, but how do they attack the problem? Again, as you said, very consistently, start small. They all got in. They're all here looking for ways to expand the platform. And then, you know, the message I always like from a startup perspective, if you're out there and you're in a startup is, you know, design a platform that's extensible over time, but you got to go to market with an application. And clearly it sounds like Fred did a really phenomenal job in that basic platform structure before he built the application. That's enabling them to really go. That said, we heard time and time and time again that these guys have a laser focus on IT and helping IT do their job better. So just because somebody from an adjacent department wants to come in and get a little assist, um, these guys are really laser focused on giving IT the tools to get that seat at the table to be business partners with the rest of the business and no longer just worrying about uh, provisioning things and shipping things and counting things. A another thing that came through time and time again was the CMDB that you talked about enabled people to really um, look at their business with a, with a degree of analytics and cost and information that then they could go to the management and, and really have hard numbers for where things were and how much things cost and where resources were allocated. And we, we heard that time and time and time again. So in terms of kind of being a data-driven uh, organization and a data-driven business decision process, it sounds like this tool is really enabling that to happen. Yeah, and I, and I think we, we also heard a lot about self-service. Uh, we heard Petra from KPN, uh, CIO, uh, uh, along with Martin, uh, tell us about how they've achieved that self-service capability. These, 
these are capabilities that you commonly don't associate with IT. I mean, we associate with Amazon, but you don't necessarily associate with internal IT. Uh, the impressive thing is that the attendees at this, this event who are ServiceNow customers, their attitude is phenomenal. Um, they seem to, this is like a reawakening. I mean, IT people are, generally speaking, incredibly smart, talented, really you know, hardworking. They, they've got some technical background, obviously, and, and you know, they're very customer driven, but they've been beaten up over the years. They've been told that IT is a cost center. You guys spend too much. You know, you're not responding fast enough, blah, 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 blah. And it's been like a, a reawakening, a renaissance of the IT professional. So it's, uh, the people here are very excited about that. That's why when Fred Luddy walks through the party, you know, <laughs> he's surrounded by people, shaking his hand, slapping him on the back, thanking him. And, uh, and I guess my observation is that while uh, incident management and change management and problem management, all this boring but important stuff is the tip of the spear, there's some really exciting developments going on you know, outside of that core IT operation. Yeah, and, and as we heard from, from Doug from Sequoia, Fred was smart enough to know where he was strong and where he wasn't strong, and he really seems to have assembled a rock star team around him, uh, both on the business side as well as the technical side, the services side, to build this company out. They've, uh, you know, I, I just love the whole thing, having spent those time at OpenStack and AWS and Shadow IT and people doing their own thing and how they're really arming the internal IT people to, to combat that, but even like with the new cloud provisioning application, to bring what was happening outside of the control of IT back into the visibility in IT and, and embracing that, that component of, of an option for their customers to get stuff done. So let's break it down a little bit, let's play a little you know, analysis. Uh, the things that I think that observers should be watching in terms of the progress of service now. I mean, obviously the financials, the company grew 81% last quarter, they're guiding you know, 60 plus percent. Uh, we had Mike Scarpelli on, uh, CFO, and so you know, of course, watch the financials. I think you know they're going to meet or beat those expectations you know, this quarter. We'll see. You know, going forward, there's a lot of things that might be outside their control. But let's wa watch the degree to which they can protect their turf, the IT service management turf, both protect it and continue to knock down the BMCs of the world, the HPs of the world, the legacy vendors that uh, really, from all accounts, everybody we're talking to this platform is, is superior, so let's watch that. The operations management is very interesting. The whole cloud ops, we've had, we had Service Mesh on a couple of times in right. the last few shows. They're sort of going after that same space. This is a new territory for ServiceNow. They're in a way, certainly in the Catbird seat with their 1,600 customers, but there's a lot of competition. A lot of people want to be that sort of cloud broker, that heterogeneous, you know, agnostic cloud broker. So let's see the degree to which they can leverage the tip of the spear and span out from there. And then also the business, whole business process management, the compliance, and also, you know, as a part of that, the metrics management, the business value piece. That's kind of a new layer. We saw some of the folks within the ecosystem that are actually building, you know, layers on top of ServiceNow, building applications to actually affect that. So that's the other thing I want to watch for, how well that ServiceNow can cultivate and grow its ecosystem. I think that's a critical metric and, and, and observation point milestone, uh, series of milestones for this company. And then finally, the whole notion of ServiceNow as a pass player, as a platform, as a service player. The degree to which they can successfully get you know, their customers, customers to build new applications, and particularly mobile applications. We heard that theme that mobile is key. In a way, I think ServiceNow is a little late to that mobile game, so now they got, I think they got to move fast. And, uh, and I think if they do, they're going to get reap a lot of rewards there. Jeff, what's your uh, analysis and, and takeaways uh, from these two and a half days? Yeah, it, it's just it's a phenomenal story. It, it's it's really a fun story uh, because of the personality of, of Fred, I think. But again, now there's there's new challenges as a public company. How are they going to grow? I like the ecosystem. I think we talked about it. I like to watch the ecosystem and how that grows. I think that's a fundamental part of building a company today, both to get the, within your own culture, but also to get the extended. A culture and, and partners to build on. I think that's going to be good. Um, curious to see how they handle the growth. This is you know, meteoric growth inside the company for the people, and clearly the culture is a really big thing. How are they going to manage that? How are they going to keep the spirit that they've got with, with these uh, folks and manage that growth? Um, those are probably the biggest. And, the, and then as you said, and I think we explored it a lot today with some of the customers, is what is the real ROI? Because as we talked to the guy last night you know, he would like to replace a legacy system with some of this newer stuff, 
But the thing is, old, paid for, and depreciated, and so his, his, his ROI on keeping that system as he's defined right now is infinite, at least until the one or two guys that know how to operate it uh, you know, get hit by the bus. So I think, as you said, you know, being able to better quantify the soft benefits and, and the ROI to expand the footprint from their basic entry point uh, and grow inside their existing customers. All right, Jeff, well listen, once again, it's been a pleasure. This is our second show together. We did the AWS Summit, uh, a little smaller than this event, but uh, it really was a, a pleasure working it with you. It was fun, thank you, and, Dave. Uh, looking forward to do, do more events with you guys. Uh, I want to thank the crew, uh, Alex, Andrew, Anthony, you guys did a great job this week. Really appreciate all your support. Kenny, who had to split to meet Mark Hopkins and do Google I.O., the whole team that was down doing SAP uh, Sapphire now. You know, great job, we'd love to do multiple events. The Cube, we try to go to the events, bring you the best guests that we can find. Uh, also thanks to Kristen Nicole, who uh, runs the, the news desk and the editorial. Uh, and, and, and Stu, appreciate your help uh, you know, back home as well, to, uh, tweeting out. Uh, and so, also thank you for watching. Uh, you have always a great audience. We appreciate the tweets, we appreciate the interaction. Go to siliconangle.com, you'll see all the news, you'll see the news from this event and other events, you'll see write-ups of the interviews that we did. Go to youtube.com slash siliconangle and you will see all of our videos, all the playlists, and check out wikibon.org, free research, open source, peers helping peers, uh, no paywalls, no firewalls. Really appreciate all your help uh, and, and all your attention. Thanks for watching everybody. This is theCUBE, this is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. We, oh, well, one quick word, so we got a number of events upcoming. Uh, we've got an O'Reilly Media event, uh, uh, Fluent is coming up uh, in, in a week or so. Uh, we'll also be at IBM Edge, we'll be at HP Discover, that's in early June, so watch for those events. We'll be back out here in, in Las Vegas, yet again. Um, so thanks for watching everybody. Viva this Las is, Vegas. This is Dave Vellante <laughs> with Jeff Frick, signing off for now. We'll see you next time. Thanks this everybody.